probably pop down later because I don't want to play again. All right, well, good morning. So I know that you're probably very excited about HIPAA training. Um, but it's really important and it's something that, you know, is obviously an obligation on all of us to comply with. Um, and, you know, we're going to talk about more than just HIPAA today. We're also going to talk about Freedom of Information Act issues and subpoena issues. I know that you're not processing subpoenas for records and you're not processing the FOIA request. However, there are a lot of implications both of this crossover with HIPAA and also just as a public employee you should know. So I wanted to talk about those things. So HIPAA, you know, you've had training before, but it's really important because despite pretty much every paramedic having training, things happen. So, for example, if you just Google paramedics and HIPAA violations, you will see story after story after story of paramedics getting themselves in trouble. So take this one. Um, this is one where there were two paramedics who got into a selfie war where they would go on calls and use their cell phone, and particularly with unconscious and homeless patients, and try to see who could come up with the most absurd picture of their patients when they were unconscious in the ambulance, putting them in awkward positions, naked, and they would text out these photographs to each other and others saying, ha ha, look at this one. Well, they ended up with multiple felonies <laughs> because they violated HIPAA. Now you might be sitting there saying, I would never do something that stupid. And if you do, I'm sorry, you know, as a village attorney, there's not much I can do, but, you know, these things can actually do happen. Or this one, and this is a California uh, paramedic who got sued by the patient in their individual capacity, not the village being sued, but you being sued individually. But the, what he did is he went um, to a motorcycle accident and... He took a picture and said this, and put a caption, that, that this is what happens when you're careless on the right on a motorcycle, and put hashtags like bye bye ankle, and the louder you scream, the faster we go. Well, so he got he gets sued for that, for a HIPAA violation. Right down the street in Northbrook, not paramedics, but this was a company called FileFax. FileFax is a uh, record storage company. And somebody walking by this business happened to see in the dumpster a whole bunch of medical records that they had just put out in the alley and threw out. The first thing they did was they called the reporters to get a load of this, and then the state got involved and it became a, a big investigation uh, of, of violating HIPAA because people threw out documents in this fashion. So think about what you do with, it, with a report that's done. <clears throat> Are you shredding it? Are you just putting it in the trash? Who's going through the trash, whether it's a custodian, whether it does it end up somewhere else? You have to be careful because I'm sure they didn't intend to violate HIPAA, but they did and they're in, in, in a world of trouble. Or this one. At a training seminar, much like just like this, there was a paramedic who came in after looking at a, at a paramedic report that he got in the system, one he probably shouldn't have looked at then sat in a training course and discussed it internally. So this isn't discussing somebody's medical information outside of the department, but within the department, just like this, saying, oh, how about that Mrs. Jones report? We treated her, and, you know, I have a question about that. Did we do that right? And they start discussing it. Well, that even sharing with each other can be a HIPAA violation, and it costs this paramedic his license. So think about that, how often that you might be sharing with each other, oh, I just got back from a call. You know, you'll never believe who we treated today. Ran into so-and-so again. That could be a HIPAA violation. And as an attorney, one of the things that I'm most concerned about, it's not the one-off, I sent a stupid text message, but it's when you have a culture where there's a lot of violations, this, you know, small infractions, but they add up, because every single time you violate HIPAA, it's a separate violation, and attorneys can go looking, and that's what they've done in some places, where whether it's a data breach, or whether it's a, you know, several violations because it's the practices are wrong, and you end up with things like $5.5 million lawsuits. So think about if we have our systems, we're not complying with our systems, and we have 1,000 patients a year, or 1,500 patients a year, whatever we have, 
add up whether, you know, if it's a $500 fine for each one, think about the liability for the village. So this is what we want to avoid and we want to be careful of. So what is HIPAA? Well, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act is the federal statute. How many here have read that statute? When I did this training a couple months ago in another department, I asked that question, and two-thirds of the room put their hand up, and I'm like, no, you didn't. <laughs> Nobody's read the statute. It's actually quite long and makes no sense. Um, however, interestingly, when you read the statute, it doesn't include the privacy rule, which is what we think of HIPAA, that you can't share information. It doesn't actually say it. It doesn't say you cannot give out this information. Instead, what it did is it gave the Department of Health and Human Services the authority to write rules, and they came out with an administrative rule called the privacy rule. And that's what we're going to talk about the majority of today, is that privacy rule. You know, in the, in the privacy rule in HIPAA preempts state and local laws, so it doesn't matter what we do as an ordinance, it doesn't matter what the Illinois law says, we have to follow it. So what is it? It creates national standards across the country that apply with how we deal with medical information. It limits our ability to use and disclose information, but it also does a couple other things. One, it requires us to create safeguards, things like shredding of documents. We have to have policies. And it also importantly, provides patients a right to get their own records. It used to be if you were a patient of a doctor and you say, hey, I want my medical records, there was technically no legal reason the doctor had to say, sure, I'll give you your file. But now your records are open to the patient who can get them, and we have to give them to them. So a little quiz. Who must comply with HIPAA? Well, we have health plans. You know, obviously, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, things like that. Healthcare clearinghouses, which are companies that work, you know, with health plans and so forth. Business associates, those are things like software companies and other consultants and others who may work with a doctor's office or a covered provider. And because they may be exposed to HIPAA information, you know, they have certain obligations other business associates. And then healthcare providers. So what's the answer? Who has to comply? Everyone. Everybody. That's a trick question. The answer is no. It's not quite everybody. It's actually technically healthcare providers who conduct certain financial and administrative transactions electronically. And it's important to know that that's you. You're a healthcare provider, and the reason you are covered by HIPAA is because you do certain transactions electronically. Technically, if you, let's say, are old Doc Johnson, and you sit on your porch, and patients come up, and you have no computer, and you don't do billing, and you just treat the boy down the street who fell off his bike, you are not bound by HIPAA. He could go out, theoretically, and give out those medical records to somebody. You're, you fall under this because of the way you do your, your billing and other transactions. So who must comply in the village? Well, with the fire department, obviously your medical providers, I don't think it's debatable, you have to comply. How about the police? If Chief Hornstein finds out medical information on a call, can he share it? Or is he bound by HIPAA? <coughs> He's bound, but he can share it between professional agencies. Okay. And the How about President Rintz? Village president learns information because he's administering, the, he has a right to see all records in the village as the village president. He, or he hears about an incident. Is he bound by HIPAA? He's not a provider. He himself is not part of the call. I thought it was like it had to be you could share within a government governmental agency or the military or something. That's they're all protected or something. So, is it? so we're going to get to who you can okay. you can share with. But if he finds it out the information, can he share? And the answer is it's a little it's kind of a gray area. But I like to think of it this way. And the best analogy I have is you go to a hospital. You're in the room with your doctor, and your doctor is treating you, and you share information with the doctor. We all recognize the doctor cannot go share that information with others. But how about the custodian who's cleaning up in the hospital, who overhears the doctor talking? Well, he's part of the hospital organization. He works for them. And I think the same thing would be true with the police and the village president, is if they find out in the course of their duties certain medical information because they're working for the village, and we're the treating agency, it's going to be very difficult to argue they don't have to comply too. So understand that this is really an obligation that affects everybody in the village um, who we're working with. So 
As we get into what we're going to talk about today, there are two types of information you really need to know about. And this is what we're going to, this is the crux of the privacy rule. It is what's called protected health information or PHI. And this is what the privacy rule really protects, which is individually identifiable health information. In any form, medium, whether electronic, paper, or oral. So the question is what is protected health information? Obviously, if I tell you as you're treating me, I happen to have a certain type of disease, or I'm taking certain medication, or the information that you have about what you did in terms of, oh, I took this patient's blood pressure and it turned out to be this. All protected health information. Also, the fact that you treated somebody, period, is protected. So just to say, I went on a call and treated Ben Schuster, that's protected. You can't tell somebody you treated me. The other type of information that HIPAA talks about that's really important to understand is what's called de-identified health information. This is the information that doesn't identify nor provides a reasonable basis to identify an individual. So we can give out information if it's de-identified, meaning we remove all identifiers of the individual, their name, their address, their phone number, but also all the other information that might reasonably be used to figure out who they are. So if we say we treated a young girl, I talked to the mother, Brenda Jones, but now we're going to figure out who it is. If you know the mother's name, you can figure out who the daughter is. You know, so you got to you know, remove the relative's names, who their employer might be, or anything else that you might have that could potentially identify somebody. Uh-oh. If you have to go, I totally understand. 